beautiful violence too. Crew David Gomez, good jump. Now Jeremy, Jeremy's a freelance fighter and he's got a karate background. Now yeah. his one fight was I believe five years ago. Oh, big overhand. And a big overhand right big hook. Overhand. He just drops. That was a very clean Victor's overhand. With already. So as you can see, Jeremy looks like he stayed active over those last yeah. five years. Because he looks good out there. You know, Jeremy's... Yeah, he set that up. Jeremy's... He's fighting kind of a very like point style fighting where he's looking for single shots. You know, Victor Gonzalez is definitely a little more active. Right now he's very active in clinch. He's got a very strong clinch. That's what I thought the difference maker would be. Yeah. Now I it looked at that moment that Elder didn't have answers for the clinch. Yeah. So it'll be interesting to see if, if Victor Gonzalez picked up on that and is able to get back into the clinch. Because I'd go right back into clinch if I was him, and he does. And now he's got to work, though. Now he's got a knee. Now he's got a knee again. And those two hands on the yeah, chest, man. guys, that's not an answer for clinch, okay? He needs to go right back into clinch. Now, if I was Gonzalez, I'd get right back in because that overhand's landing. But cover your head. Yeah, Jeremy's got to stay out of that clinch, though. And he falls right back into it. Right back into it. What? Now, what I don't like is that when Victor Gonzalez throws his jab... He drops it to his chest instead of bringing it back to his face. Yup, exactly. And that's why Elder's scoring that overhand. Yeah, overhand right. So, so man, that's a very close round there. Jeremy scored the takedown, landed the the knockdown, but other than that, Victor. So, Lots of damage with that tie clinch. Because, because of the of the standing count, I I believe you're gonna have to give that a nine ten to Jeremy Elder. Okay. All right. Nine ten or nine. Nine eight. ten. It's one knockdown. One knockdown. If there was a second knockdown with a count, that would go to an uh, ten eight. Okay. Okay. Now if there's a third, the fight would be over. TKO. Okay. The fight so over. that's. Something to consider now. I'm gonna be honest with you. You know, we have a lot of different commissions, yeah. so I'm not exactly sure how ISK. I don't either. Ranks I that. Honestly, do not. I know. believe, and and if someone out there's listening and you know better, you know, let us know. But I think that becomes an automatic 9-10 because of the count. Okay. But hey, man, you know, what if the judge doesn't know that? I I, I don't know. So. So it's really hard for a 9-9 nine to nine to come in unless a guy loses a point then, obviously, yeah. right? Yeah. Now, again, Gonzalez goes back to clinch, and he's working. Yeah. And he's going to keep working. Was a Ooh. Jeremy responded, don't know how to get out of clinch, so he just need him in the groin. Yeah. You know, that I don't want to say that was intentional, but um, I don't, and I don't think it landed very flush, but... You know, Gonzalez definitely responded to it immediately. Yeah. I don't know that if it didn't land that flush, I don't know if I would have stopped the action because he was getting the better of the exchange. Yeah, he was. You know, but here we For go sure. again. Let's see. I like how it, aggressive Gonzalez is. He definitely has discovered that this is going to be a clinch fight. Yep. He's got to protect himself from yeah, the from he needs that to stay looping on that overhand. Bicycle more. And now, the other thing, too, is that Jeremy trade. cannot drop his head into the striking zone, okay? Because, yes, knees to the head are illegal. However, if Jeremy drops his head into the striking zone, gets need, that'll be ruled unintentional. Then it would be his own fault. Yes. Now he's got a knee again. He's got a knee again. He's got a knee again. Vector's doing a good job at now, trapping his arm. When Jeremy's got to cover clinch. his head. He's because, you know, Elder has one tool and it's that overhand. But there's the overhand again, and every time he throws the overhand, uh, Gonzalez is putting him in clinch. 
Jeremy's very tired now. Yeah, and, and the audience has picked up on that. They're yelling he's tired. Yep. So the question becomes, Sean, did did Jeremy Elder see this guy, Victor Gonzalez, two and four, not take him seriously, and that affected his training? That's a good question. Because Gonzalez is out to win right now. And, you know, Elder is just, again, throwing one looping hand out. Keeps, it lands. He's it lands. Looking, yep. And remember, striker's chance. You got to finish the fight now. The overall round, Because a though. hurt animal is still dangerous, okay? Yep. Now, you can make an argument that Elder's got the, the knockdown in the first round. And yep. maybe because of that, he wins the round. Yep. Definitively, Gonzalez took the second round. Absolutely. He won in every position. Absolutely. But, way more damage, way more output. You know, now was that a 9-10 round uh, for Gonzalez? Was that, uh, you know, a 10-8 round for Gonzalez? Man, it's, he didn't get no knockdowns, so I'll probably keep it at 10-9. But so that, that's as close as it gets to dominating we're, around. We're going into a third round where both fighters are even, but the momentum has certainly shifted. But let me say this, and I want to make sure that the audience at home knows this. It only, it only takes one of those overhands to land flush yep, for this exactly. fight to be over. And, you know, Elder is loading that shot up. I think a big question is going to be if this round goes with no knockdowns and Victor wins it normally, I want to know if Jeremy won that first round, 10-8 or 10-9. I want to know if we could have a 28-28 draw on our hands here. You know, it's funny because in professional fighting, the draw, the betting line on the draw is plus 5,000. Yeah. The draw is so rare. Happens. We see a lot of draws in amateur fighting. Yep, absolutely. It happens a lot in amateur. I, we had at least one on our last show. I want to say we had two. I think we had two. I believe there was two. I, I believe correctly. we did have two. He don't want to fight. He don't. He, he just. Elder's waving it off. I I, I don't know if he's going to. He just doesn't have a response for he, the he, clinch. He's, he's, he's trying to kind of pump fake him. And Gonzalez is just a more seasoned fighter at this point. Again, Elder's loading up and he needs to be aware of that. He needs to cover his head. You see it a lot. Boxers go into a kickboxing But he's loading. Fight. He's loading up over here. Like to get he's loading up. It's landing, but there's nothing on it now. Yeah, there's nothing to set it up. Gonzalez needs to control this fight and he needs to finish it. But he can't get into a... A pissing contest, if you yeah, will. Yeah, no, he can't. Okay? He needs to just stay in that clinch like that. It's amazing Jeremy hasn't gone down yet. He needs to go now. You got to go now. When your fighter looks like that, you got to be aware because he's dangerous. His hands are low. You got to score. But, but Gonzalez has to be measured. He can't get excited. He can't go in there and look for a, a single knockout oh. blow. Fight. Fighters are definitely worried about the knees to the face. They should just fight. Let the ref do his job. Now, this goes back to body language. So this is an interesting decision. We might have a first split. We might have our first draw. Majority, majority. See, one of them had it a draw. Yeah, that doesn't surprise me. And the winner, fighting out of the Yeah, I think I think that's the right decision. I think it is too. You know, 